Salvation Army. You can find great stuff at Salvation Army. Pastor took me out to Salvation Army one day. They got, got me some new clothes because I needed some. And it was being a blessing to me. You know, Pastor bought me a, a almost brand new looking London Fog. You know how expensive a London Fog is? A coat? Yeah, they're expensive. Mm-hmm. I looked up one just, not exactly like mine, but close to mine. It was over almost, it was almost $200 for that coat. $200. Even pea coats and stuff like that are expensive. We bought it for eight bucks. But the thing is, whether or not they're misusing the money that you give to somebody or not, if you give to the homeless guy, he drinks with it and he misuses it, you still gave it to God no matter what because you were faithful. You did what God wanted you to do. Whether just, was, go ahead. Just like Mother Teresa said, you're helping Jesus Christ in distress. And even if they you misuse it, you're still helping Jesus Christ in distress. Right, you're still doing what God wants you to do. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, where were you when I was hungry? Where were you when I was naked? Where were you when I was sick or in jail? He said, if you done it to the least of them, You've done it to me. So if you did it for other people, you've done it to, for God, no matter what. And even though it's dangerous, seek out the homeless and, and uh, help them by going up to them and asking them, are you homeless or do you need money? Yeah. And of course, of course they'll say yes, but... Um, if they're hungry, buy them some food. Go to the store or go to McDonald's and get them some hamburgers and drinks. Don't physically, if you think that they're going to buy alcohol or drugs with it, then say, look, here, here's some hamburgers. Here's a quarter pound with cheese with extra pickle, extra onion, and french fries and a drink. Nobody in the right mind that's going to be handed a free quarter pound with cheese is going to say no. Would you, Chris? No. Absolutely not. Nobody. There. Oh, thank you so very much. I remember a time when uh, me and my buddy, uh, and this has happened to my wife several times with me and my wife, but specifically an example with me and my buddy Tom when he was alive. I was doing some stuff to Tom with my magic, and and uh, this guy goes comes up to our table and goes, can I ask you a quick question? I said, yes, what's up? He goes, can you please show my son some tricks? He would just love to see what you're doing. I said, absolutely. So I made the scarf disappear. I pulled sponge balls out of his ear. And I did all these things. His son was just gawking at me. He was just excited. And, he, and then when I when my food came and I sat down to eat, I came back. And uh, the guy apparently was a pastor. And uh, came back and the waitress, and we asked for a bill. The waitress goes, uh... Richard goes, well, Jesus paid your bill. I said, what? She goes, Jesus paid your bill. And as he was coming out of the bathroom, he left the tip on the table. He came back. He says, thank you so very much. He goes, my son thoroughly loved what you did. He goes, I appreciate that. Thank you. And walked out the door. So I know that that man paid for that meal. So with that being said, I didn't say no. I wasn't complaining. I was a happy camper. We didn't have to pay for it. So with that being said, give them the food because then they'll still make them happy. They'll still put food in their stomach. It'll still bring nutrition in them. The Downs ain't the greatest nutrition in town. I mean, they're so full of carbs, calories, and fat. It's pathetic. But at least it'll bring them some kind of a nutritious nutrition to their body. So don't miss any opportunities just because they say, well, I, I'm homeless, I need money. Don't miss the opportunity to give them something because you can turn around and buy them something to eat and drink and that will be the same thing. And if they misuse what you give to them, then you still did it for God. Because if you've done it for the least of them, you've done it for me. Amen. Amen. So let's do one song. Because i got to get upstairs to get to eating. And I kid you not, we're, we got 23 minutes left. We're, we're, we're wearing the time down again. We always do, guys. Do we not, Chris? <laughs> yes, we do. We always do, and that's the beauty of it. Now, on a good note, though, I want my listeners to be, be aware of this. On a good note, and I'm not, not saying that we're going to, but we're going to upgrade the podcast even more a little bit, Chris. 
once I start getting into the job and things start happening a little bit better, we're going to start upgrading the podcast a little bit more. They'll give us um, a five-hour time slot more storage to keep all the podcasts in there and they'll give us full statistics and not only will give us full statistics that will give us the opportunity to be able to uh let the listeners pick their color for the the uh the uh the player for the app and stuff so there's a lot of stuff that's going to be able to be done when we upgrade to the new uh plan for the show so we're going to upgrade the show it's going to give us full statistics what the first statistics guys will do right now it tells us our downloads our likes our geolocation and our sources where they're listening from the new stuff will tell us who is listening whether it's male or female and other stuff too it'll give us even more statistics and it'll pinpoint even more so we can get a better grasp of an idea chris of who's listening and what the demographics are and stuff like that. So then that way, once we know what's going on, then we can tailor the show to do that even more with those demographics. So it's going to be a big thing happening. But you know what, though? There's a lot of stuff going on, including this new... And I want to let the listeners know again, since we did our word today, that we are going to continue with Outside the Classroom. We're getting some great results from it. I even got, and Wednesdays are my days, I don't get too many downloads from, but we got a good number of downloads on Wednesday for the outside the classroom. So we're going to continue this, guys. And it's going to be, it, there's going to be a lot of stuff happening that God's going to be doing. And it's just, it, it's going to be one of those things, Chris, that we're just going to sit back and say, you know what, I don't deserve this. But thank you, God, anyways, for doing what you're doing. Because you know what, without you, this would not be possible. And and that's the true sense, Chris. If God was not into this podcast, would we succeed at it? Absolutely not. We'd fall flat on our faces. We'd fall flat on our faces if, we, and as I say, we need to super glue God into the middle of our relationship with you know our spouses. But in ministry, we need to super glue God into the middle of that relationship with ministry and. We'll super glue him to the center of that table and leave him there. So he's the center of everything that goes on because without him being the center of the show, there's no way the show would have lasted. I've seen, and to, to be honest, I've seen podcasts that were not about God come and go. Think about how many places during this pandemic, not just podcast-wise, but places shut down. Because of <laughs> things happening and pan- the pandemic going on, but see, it- Michigan is one of the worst states for cases right now. And see, if they would put God first in their business or their relationship or whatever the case is, that would not have happened. Because God would have sustained their business. God would have sustained their business and their business still be going on. That's why I tell people, you got to put God into the center of your every moment. Because without God, you're just going to fall flat on your face and fail. This podcast will not be where it's at now if I didn't put God into the into the center of this, this whole ordeal. Because when I first started, guys, and Chris including, when I first started... I I would I wouldn't know what I was doing and I'd find a, a flyer on the bus that that gave me uh seven uh ideas of who God what God calls you and stuff, you know, I am blessed, I am this and I am that and they gave scriptures for it and and I read things off and I didn't come up with messages myself and I read things off and crappy things like that and it just it wasn't so exciting because I tried doing it my way. I I did a, what was his name again? I keep forgetting. I did a Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. Elvis sang it too. But I did a Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. And I got 15 downloads. And I was excited, but I did it my way. But until I put God into the center of this relation, into this relationship of this podcast, and then severed the ties of Steve being on here and putting you in here, that's when I stopped doing it my way. Or we stopped doing it our way and started doing, doing it his way. And that's another opportunity, again, guys, that you don't want to miss is doing it God's way. Because when you miss that opportunity, oh, man, 
God's going to get with you at the end of time is to say, you missed that big opportunity right there. Did you know that him, 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 and her would have been saved through me if you would have not missed that opportunity? I'm going to feel bad at the end of time for all the opportunities I missed where someone could have been saved. And God just told me to tell everyone, listen to your heart. Whatever your heart is telling you and leading you and guiding you, and if you're not being led in God, uh, pray that you're led in God. Let Him uh, lead, guide, and direct you. Absolutely. Let your let your steps be ordered of the Lord. Pray that prayer. Absolutely. You might be surprised. You might be very surprised what God can show you. This is a joke a little bit, but I'm going to say this, and it's going to be funny, but listen not only your heart, but listen to your heart and your gut. <laughs> and the reason why I say and your gut, because you ever had that, uh, oh, well, I dropped something, oh, well. You ever had that, little, uh, that sensation down in the bottom of your gut that you just knew that something was, was not right, or like you would do something, you, you just felt that inkling in your gut that you, that oh that's not right. Or you walked up to somebody and you felt that something was not going to be right. You ever had that feeling, Chris? Oh yeah. It's called your conscience. You know who you know who your conscience is. Your conscience Jesus. is God. Jesus. Right. Your conscience is God and Jesus telling you that what's going on. And if you don't follow your conscience, then you're going to be in big trouble. He goes, I told you about this. I gave you that inkling. I us be aware. Go ahead. Be aware that the enemy can also pretend to be your conscience. Oh, absolutely. He will t- talk and sound like the Lord. And... Uh, you know you're you know you're right with God when you get a sense of peace after doing what you do, after being told what to do. And also, you know you're right with God when things are going your way. When things yes. are going your way, you also know you're right with God. Now that doesn't mean that just because things are going your way does because the devil can actually bring things your way too. But it's. It's not the things that are coming away that you know you are with God. It's what is coming away that you know you are with God. Like if you know, if you got you know, uh, prostitutes and things like that coming away, you know you're not right with God. But as in, if 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 your ministry is blooming, if your relationship with your spouse is being rekindled again, or if you the divorce you got, if you're rekindled again, you're now back with them and you're married again. If those things are coming your way, and if, then you know God's pleased with what you're doing. Because God would never bring back a relationship or bring back something or, or promote your ministry unless two things, unless you're doing right with God or He knows eventually you're going to be right with Him again. Because I had an incident where my pastor, Bishop, here in Michigan, knew to a T that I was, I was in that lifestyle of being a homosexual. In that lifestyle. I got to remember to not say the F word because I don't want to be derogatory towards nobody. And I used it all the time. And that's something that my buddy, Dr. Scott, said I should stop saying. But I was in the homosexual lifestyle and Bishop knew that. But Bishop ordained me as a chaplain, as a minister, knowing knowing that I was in that lifestyle. Now, most people like Steve would say, well, that was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. But think about it. Bishop told me, he goes, you know, Andrew, he goes, if I put you in that office already, even though you were that way, because I knew that God was going to redeem you from that to begin with. He says, but I taught you and trained you because you were what? teachable at that moment. You were vulnerable at that moment. I taught you everything I needed to teach you to be a chaplain. So that when you got out of that situation, you didn't have to learn it. You already knew it. Then you could apply it to your walk with God once you got out of that area. So, then God will do that. God will 
put you in an office like that, even though you're doing something wrong, because he knows the outcome later on. He knows what's going on, so he's prepared.